welcome back to Split Decision. This week on episode 67, we're going to start off by recapping UFC Edmonton. Brandon Moreno put on a masterclass striking performance. Big things happened in Canada. Did anything big happen in the U.S.? Alex? Nope, nothing at all. Um, from there, we are going to recap UFC Vegas one or preview. Sorry, we're going to preview UFC Vegas 100. That's Neil Magny versus Carlos Prats. It's going to be a super exciting one. The Centurion of fights at the Apex, the hundredth fight card at the Apex. It'll be fun. And all then, done in like one and a half years. Yeah, it's been a lot. And they're building a new Apex. So good for the UFC. Good growth there. And as always, we're going to wrap up the whole episode. We're going to huddle up. <laughs> there you go. For some hey. football, we're going to talk NFL, what is it, week 10? College football, week 11? Believe Our top so. matchups right. of the week. Uh, we'll give you 15 total picks. And of course, as always, free bets. Spoiler alert. I had a perfect week. I went 15 and 0 on picks and 5 and 0 on bets. So it was rigged. Let's get it started. Big fight card this past weekend in Edmonton, Canada, UFC Edmonton. It it was a fun fight card. It was it a was... fun fight card. It delivered uh I yeah. always love when the, the fight nights go to live crowds in, in places they don't always go to. Crowd was electric. A lot of good fights. Yep. Um, good main card. Exciting main card. Title implications in the main card. Across the board, yeah. It was but, a very interesting full scope uh, main card. Full scope fight cards for the entire UFC Edmund, bet Edmonton. As, bet as always, Alex, before we get to the main card, it's take a look at the prelims yeah let's start with a contentious opener jamie lynn horth took on ivana petrovic in the women's flyweight division both showed success early on but horth's overall pressure and takedown in the third round really earned her the split decision uh nod even though it had you know the dissenting view on one side she earned a 30 27 which is probably the wrong scorecard overall uh when you see 28 9 28s you know favoring uh, but either way, it moves her to 2-1 and one in the UFC and good groups of cheers from the Canadian crowd. Yeah, the Canadian fighters uh, had a lot of support. They performed yeah, I think pretty, they went, relatively well. Yeah, they uh, went like 4-2 and two overall. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, Canada's cheering, unfortunately, was stopped in the next fight when Cody Gibson defeated Chad and Helliger, showing a dominant ground game, scoring 5 out of 6 takedowns with nearly 12 and a half minutes of control time uh cody gibson scored 30 27 on all the judges scorecards moved him to two and two in his second stint in the ufc so he's uh showing better success than he did the first time around a split decision that leaves little to complain about was next where sarah he city defeated defeated garrett armfield by split decision um they were near even in strikes only difference in the control time, but that really doesn't tell the whole story because City was taken down, so he probably lost the third, but he did enough in the first two to win, you know, win the whole fight. So it was I, it good. It could have gone either way. I could see how you could judge it either way. Yeah, I had Garrett Armfield as my initial pick, uh, but this is his second decision that doesn't go his way in the UFC. Unfortunate for him. He's start getting finishes. But he's putting out good fights at the very least. So uh, if you're going to lose split decisions, at least you're losing, uh, you know, in a good showing. Moving on, despite being, you know, winning, I guess we could say, Alexander Romanov uh, won over Rodrigo Nascimento. He's now no longer in the UFC. They have since uh, not renewed his contract. He was on his last fight. Um, he was 30-27 on all the judges' scorecards. He got 6 out of 10 takedowns, Seven fifty-three of control time. He went seven and three in the UFC. Yeah, I think it's a little unfair. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind he of must, Dana must hate him or something. He must have made some enemies. Yeah, I don't know. Seven and three in the UFC in that time on his ten fight. Uh, Good, coming off of a win where he kind of didn't. I wouldn't did, say dominate, but he like didn't he easily, beat the he won. shit out of Nascimento, but he did dominate the fight. Like it was no doubt he, he won the fight. Right. Once he got him on the ground, Nascimento really had nothing to do. Um, so sucks for Romanov. Hopefully, we see him back in the UFC one day. Um, now, it's a doggy dog world out there, brother. Talking about UFC stints, Yusuf Zalal is the next fight. Uh, Yusuf Zalal versus 
Jack Shore. I almost said Zach Shore. Uh, Jack Shore going three, three, and one all decisions in his first bout. He's now three and zero oh with three submissions. Yusuf Salal, that is, in his second stint in the UFC, just getting the submission by arm triangle over Jack Shore. He's come in the second time around as like a He's completely a- changed, dominant. Just going for it. He used it as momentum to, or as motivation to get yeah. better, getting cut. Absolutely. Uh, so it's his second arm triangle, and he's looking, at making everything look easy so far. So shout out to Eustace at all. Really shout moving forward. Now, Charles Air Jordan was looking to change things up by moving to the bantamweight division since he dropped from featherweight. You know, he was fighting at 145. He's 135. Took a couple losses uh, by knockout. He it's decided to, cut, though. to bring the power. He wanted to bring power to the bantamweight division, and he pretty much immediately, uh, you know, second round got the guillotine win. It was a good showing by Air Jordan choking the air out of Victor Henry. In front of the home crowd. Yeah. It's uh, how you want to see it. All right. Prelim finale. Finally said that right. Eamon Zahabi stuffed everything Pedro Munoz threw at him, winning 30-27 on all the scorecards. Uh, Dominant takedown defense from Zahabi. Stuffing six out of six takedowns. No control time for Munoz and outstriking him. Just an overall dominant showing. Yeah, Munoz is a guy. Made it look easy. He's a, you know, if you're a UFC fan, you know him. He's been around for a while. He hasn't been, you know, seems like he's kind of on the the back end of his career. But a great win for uh, Zahabi. Zahabi, yes. Absolutely. So let's go. Oh, that moves Zahabi to six and two. And with that, let's go to the main card. Mike Proper Malo took on and defeated Trevin Giles. United decision. The Canadian in front of the the home crowd opened up the main card in a big way. Yeah. It was a nice win for him. But Trevin Giles could have stolen that fight pretty easily. Realistically speaking, like Trevin Giles probably won the first round, but then the second and third on, he just wasn't very active. Mike Mallett in his post- post-fight press conference thing he said his whole game plan was just to not really get gassed out which that's not a great game plan to come into i know last fight he got knocked out in the last like 40 seconds to neil magny but it's really it's a good win if you're for a Canada. promoter that's not what you want to hear your fighter say my right. game plan is not to get gassed out no, right your game plan should be in to go get a finish over but, trevin giles who you were a minus 400 favorite pre-fight so and he did get a win, um, which is nice, as I said, in front of the home crowd. It's good. Right. It started the main card off right. But and that's kind of what, what you're he said. He was at. like, I'm br- trying to bring home a win for Canada. He was like, I'm not trying to put myself in danger, which I get not trying to get yourself hurt. Just don't say that. Though. But you could have just fought better. You could have just fought awesome better. to Neil Magny in your first fight, and you just got tired. I just don't know if it's a fight that the win that like, progresses his career at all. No, I, I don't think so. Especially I saying, like, don't say that. Yeah, you had Anthony. We speak on Anthony Richardson a lot last week. He got benched for saying he was tired. So, you know, Dana White's a cutthroat dude. He doesn't like you just kind of quitting on your feet type stuff. Those types of things might shorten your career at the end of your contract. I don't know if Dana was paying attention to the UFC this week. No, he wasn't there for sure. (laughs) Uh, Marc-Andre Barrio for the next fight got knocked out by Dustin Stoltzfus. This this is one I picked. This was a... Non Canadian. This was a Canadian losing fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dustin stole. So, it's, so it was cool. They went, you know, it was a light shot by Barrio, and Stoltzfus just kicked his leg, and it came out. And he was like, well, I'll just attack. Got on top of him. Stayed there for like, what, what's the control time say? Three, four, almost four minutes. 3.54. And then as soon as they stood up, st- stood up the power bomb, or power bar, whatever his nickname is. He power was, bar. He was like, I'm going to just start throwing my shots now. It's time to, you know, maybe knock him out. And I think he could sense that that Barrio was gassed. And, dude, he was like, Dustin Stoltz was said, yeah, we'll throw down and bang. And he landed that hard right hook coming off the fence. And Barrio just went down completely out. Stoltz was earned his first UFC knockout. This was definitely, this was finish of the night, probably performance of the night. Yeah. Uh, most, well... Not performance of the night. Maybe if you not performance, Brandon Marino. But the finish. Yeah, I said it right the first time. The finish of the night. Right. Most exciting way to end the fight in the whole main card. So Dustin Stoltz, it's his only other KO that you might know is over Joe Pfeiffer. Yeah, it's a TKO with the the arm, the arm or elbow injury, whatever it was. So 
this type of win is something that really vaults your career because you're somebody who's taken you know a few losses because you're some, you're more of a specialist you know you're a wrestler who hunts submissions you got a good knockout over a powerful guy you have a knockout over joe pfeiffer even though it's not really your fault where does it go for dustin stoltzfus next is the question joe pfeiffer called him out said he wants his revenge fight i would like that that'd be a great fight to see which is crazy because anything outside of joe pfeiffer calling him out we'd be like Stolzfus oh that's a reach fight deserve, yeah. he doesn't deserve it yada yada it's but crazy. hey this is the chance for stolzfus now to be like okay yeah he's like i got a good camp behind me i'm healthy right now i can take this and ride ride up so i got joe pfeiffer or if we're given a more realistic rise for stoltzfus you know they book piper somebody up there with piper if you give dustin stoltzfus kevin gastelum or brad Tavar- tavares i think either all three of those guys would be name recognition for stoltzfus would be a good fight to take to like progress his career <clears throat> but i think piper's the one to make yeah it was kind of a you don't want to say fluky but i mean he hurt himself that's how we that's how Stolz was got yeah, the TKO I, win. I like how Piper called it Piper a revenge called, fight because Piper, he's not discrediting the loss at all. He's trying to earn yeah. the win. And Piper called him out, so take advantage of the call out. You know, it's kind of just like you got a good hand of cards. Yeah. Play the cards. Yeah, play the hand you're dealt. Okay? Keep the ride going if you can. Uh, let's move to the next fight. Jasmine Jasu Davicious taking on Arian Da Silva, formerly Arian Lipsky. Yeah, this was one we didn't cover. No, uh, it, was, it was originally not on the main card, but, but because Derek, Derek Lewis, Lewis got canceled, uh, he got injured. I think they said he, his testicles were growing warmer in temperature, something a lot like that. His balls were hot. His balls was hot. No, uh, hopefully he gets better. But he had to withdraw for medical reasons. You're gonna feel bad if he has like testicular <laughs> cancer. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrible. Thinking. That would be like the. You know, he's been thinking it the whole time. He knew something was hot. He just didn't know the answer. Now, uh, they, they went out, the two women in the flyweight division went out and performed well. Um, honestly, Silva had never been subbed before, so I didn't see this coming. I thought it was going to be the traditional uh, flyweight women's decision fight, yeah. where even if it's entertaining, it would just probably go to the decision because it's hard for them to get finishes. <clears throat> but Jasuda Vicious put on a striking clinic, uh, uh grappling clinic it was a hell of a, a hell of a performance for the canadian yeah, it was a great performance from she her. said All she's old and 35 so expect to see her back soon you know she can't imagine herself taking a long break so she wants to fight quick so i put some Self-aware. options up for her yeah she wants to she's now higher in the top 15 i think she's 13th now so she has you know a stake to say she wants somebody Moving she wants up. a top five give her rose nama Yunus or same timeline Macy Barber hadn't seen her fight. She was in the hospital, so maybe she needs a a normal fight before a title fight. Or Natalia Silva is probably my reach play here, just because the only reason she's in discussion is because there's kind of a, a title fight clog at the top right yeah. now. There's a few girls hunting for a title shot that all deserve it in their own right. So somebody has to fight before then. I think Rose would be a good one. I think that's the one biggest name recognition. You get a win right there. You know, it's like a notch on your resume. Yeah. Same timeline. They both fought on this card. And um, we see that a lot of times. We'll see that this coming on UFC Vegas 100. You have Prots, uh, Chuck Buffalo, Charlie Radke. Yeah. They'll fight each other. Last time, they're fighting on the same card again. You see timelines fight together a lot. So, yeah. So, I think that's the one to make. I think any of them would be, a, uh, would be good for her to take, obviously. You know, trying to move up top five but i think rose would be i would like to see the rose fight yeah cool let's go to the next fight cal machado versus brinson ribeiro we this did, one you got it right i got it wrong but this i could probably, have gone either way i probably got this one wrong in like reality i think i got it wrong i'm happy i picked it right yeah watching the fight i thought machado won right could have gone either way like i'm not mad really with the loss it's but if you're comparing split decisions, this is a worse split decision than the armfield split decision from the beginning of the card. Like in terms of this is less deserving of split decision? Right. It yes. should have been more of a 29-28 in favor of Machado because that's how, that's how really the fight played out in my opinion. Even though I picked Ribeiro, I'll of course take the win. It helped me go perfect on the fight card. So once again, I'll take it. Um, but with that, Brinson Ribeiro really saves his uh his middleweight record 
you know, catch or light heavyweight record. He I'm sorry, this one. he really needed the win. Um, this is one of those. Look, Kane Machado, Kyle Machado, sorry, was coming down from the heavyweight division. Both so, guys actually needed to win. I mean, both guys. Machado now 0 and 3 in the UFC. Yeah, like, that's it's, tough. it's not a great look. That might be his last UFC. Fight. Changing changing of division though does kind of buy you some time, especially if you like actually come in at weight in the light heavyweight division from and heavyweight. You arguably, arguably won. You could say you won the fight. Yeah, I would say he won. Um, it doesn't really do much for Brinson Rivera's rankings or anything like that. It this really is just, just a, earns, both these guys needed a win. It earns him a next fight in the UFC and hopefully a better performance than we saw this time. Let's go. Go to the co-main, Aaron Blanchfield versus Rose Nabayunas. This one uh, made me feel bad up front because round one, Blanchfield lost, and then I cashed my parlay. And then Blanchfield just turned it on after that. Yeah, like on the stool, I cashed the parlay, and then they stood up, and the fight changed from then on. Yeah, this is a very impressive performance from Blanchfield. She's coming off of the uh, her last fight before this, I believe was her first loss. Yeah. So it was a great. We always talk well, about first UFC first loss. UFC loss. Yeah. Um, how are you going to respond to the loss? You come in and you fight Rose and you beat her. This is a great response from Blanchfield and largely beat her at her own game. You know, yeah. for a lot of the fight, Rose's uh, she couldn't takedown defense was held. Good. So then you had to force the feet or force the, uh, force the her standing. On the feet, and she beat her on the feet, and yeah. then she got her on the ground. Yeah, which cemented the 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 win. You know, being able to overcome that adversity from the first round you know obviously losing to winning majority of the rounds through <laughs> there uh great shot great showing and then blanchfield her last loss was against fuaro who's probably getting a title shot next yeah see that she's blanchfield here is one of those in the contention that we're talking about with fuaro with uh alexa grasso shevchenko the whole mix of the group so i think blanchfield i think the logical I think she has one because she lost to Fuaro, who probably is going to get the next title fight. I think she's probably a fight or two away, so even though I, she's still at the top. Yeah, uh, I like Grasso, Blanch, Blanchfield Grasso. So that's the fight I have written down. Uh, obviously, I have the surprise title shot. Yeah, you written never down because you you're never this know. close. You could. You she know, deserved- negotiations with somebody could go wrong, and they're like, "Okay, we'll go to her." Right, uh, or you know. Maybe even the Ferraro rematch. You never know. I think that's the reachiest play of them all. I think all. that's the reach. I think the only way she gets that is if Ferraro gets a, the belt. Oh, yeah. That would be—she uh, just waits for Ferraro yeah. to get the belt. Um, I see Alexa Grasso being the most likely option. Me, too, and I think that would be a very entertaining one. You could either put it as a main event of a fight night or it would be like the, you know, in the main card of a pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it would be a good one to see. I think so as well. Let's go to the main event now, the most exciting fight on the card, and what we actually needed to happen, what we said we needed to happen, we needed Savage Brandon Moreno and back. And Savage Brandon Moreno came back. He did. Baby uh, Assassin dominated Al Bazi. He proved, as we've seen multiple times watching all these UFC fights, that there's levels to this. Yeah, absolutely. And Brandon Moreno's on a different level than Al Bazi. Uh, Gave Albazi his first career UFC loss, now 5-1 and one in the UFC. Moreno yep. moves, that's his 10th career UFC win. Took his O. I mean, that's strong. He was 17-0 and 0 coming in, and Moreno just dominated the man as if as if he was nothing. It was crazy. Yeah, and Albazi just had no answer to Moreno. Uh, I mean, you could see that Albazi was a guy. Moreno had the big fight experience, the five-round experience. Albazi didn't. And but more so, I think that break that Moreno took off, you know, kind of fighting all those rematches, that it kind of like rejuvenated him. Yeah, yeah, like that that gave him everything he needed, which is a, makes him a dangerous man. And he says he's looking for his title back, but he also acknowledged that he's probably he probably had to take another fight between then yeah, and get his agree. title back. Which I agree, especially just based on the fact uh, he's fought Pantoja three times, Pantoja three times, Brandon Roval Val, twice, yeah, Davis so Figueroa like, three times. He's fought Kai Kara France, hasn't he? No, no, Brandon Wilbaugh fought Ty Kerr uh, France uh, I twice. think Brandon Moreno did too. But just once, though. Once, yeah. Um, all right, so who's next for Brandon Moreno? I got three options. It's probably going to be a rematch, I'm going to say. I have two options that aren't rematches, just in case. Tatsuro Tyra, I think would be a fantastic option. Yeah, but Tyra coming off the loss. Doesn't matter. He's a star that they want to hype up. And you have to remember that uh, Asu Asakura is fighting Pantoja for the belt. So there is a already, yeah. you know. Contention in the air there. Manel Cop. 
Manel Cop, he, he's already, Moreno's already said that if Manel Cop wins in December, he'd fight him next. Or Kai Kara France. Someone who just dominated Steve Urseg with the knockout victory, solidified himself as soon to be a title challenger, if not one of the Steve next. Ursaig. Hey, Steve Urseg's up there too. I just don't want to see Steve Urseg get beaten. <laughs> I, I like, like Steve Urseg. Urseg. Um, Kai Kara France, that's a good one. I think that'd be a, a banger of a fight. Uh, you never know. He might get. If uh, Pantoja were to lose, you think he gets Asakura? He could. I mean, I mean he could. Legitimate, this is one fight that he yeah, has never legitimate. gotten. I think Brandon Royval gets a title shot before him, though. Probably so, uh, especially considering he beat him last time they fought. Right. Uh, like, and as far as recent trajectory, but again, you just never know with because uh, fight timelines are important. And Moreno is more a bigger star than. Yeah, Rival. So you he's never, not an American. You know, like he has that. He has the whole Mexico crowd behind him. Yeah, and you, I think everybody's a big Brandon Moreno fan. So I think yeah. he has a lot of options. He's humble and he's nice. He's a cool guy. I think he has a lot of options. Absolutely. Um, I say book Kai Kara France next. I think so too. Sweet. I think so too. I think that's the well, right let's book it. Look, that's the recap of UFC Edmonton. Hit that like button, boys. <laughs>。UFC Vegas 100, the 100th fight card at the Apex. Alex, we're finally here. It's the moment we've all been waiting It's for. only taken like 700 days. Yeah, it hasn't been very long. <laughs> um, Since like COVID, the middle of COVID. <laughs> yeah. But a uh, six fight main card, actually five fights, I'm sorry. No, six. It's still six. They just swapped it around on us. Six fight. I only have five written down, so... Don't worry about it. Well, we're covering the five we we both knew about when we wrote it. Yes, correct. All uh, right. Well, let's go over the first one, the middleweight division. Mansur Abdul Malik, 6-0 middleweight, taking on Dusko Todorovic, a 12-4 middleweight. Abdul Malik, it's his UFC debut, 6-0, mm-hmm. as you said. All six wins have come by finish, five knockouts, one submission, yep. uh, including... Uh, second round TKO in his Dana White Contender Series uh, fight, which was his last fight, and he's take and they kind of gave him a uh, an interesting fight to start his UFC career off with. He's taking on a guy who's been in the UFC for a little while. He's three and four in Tudor uh, Tudorovic. Tudorovic. I'm sorry, he lost his last fight by injury. Uh, it's knee, weird. He's knee injury had, last May. He's had a quite not quite a few. He's had a few for UFC fights, and he's fought people we know. But I feel like I've never seen him fight. Well, he's three four in the UFC. He has three knockout wins, three knockout losses. So he's right. a guy. He's gonna go out, stand a bang, and he's gonna put it all out on the line. Yep. Uh, and he's taking on a guy who's making his UFC debut, as we said, in Abdul Malik. But mm-hmm. he's a guy who's gonna also want to do that. So I think there's gonna be a very entertaining fight. Yep. Uh, and I think they set up Abdul Malik to come in and make a show uh, in his first career UFC fight. Play, yeah, I, make a name for himself for UFC fans. I agree. They're definitely uh, giving him the opportunity. Minus 425 money line pre, uh, pre-fight pre odds They're here. saying, show us what you can do. Make a splash. 27 to 30. It's He's good a matchmaking. slight age uh, favorite there. 79-inch reach to 74-inch reach. 5-inch reach advantage. That's big. Real big. That is big. Especially if you ask me. Especially if it's a guy that... What? uh, Gets knocked out a lot. Or often. Three and three. I wouldn't say a lot. He's only 12 wins, four losses, three by knockout. I'm talking UFC. He's lost four times, three of them by knockout. That is a fair point. alternated wins, losses the last five. That is a plus for him, meaning that if that trend continues, he's due for a win. That's Dusko. Fair, fair, fair. I guess I, I I guess I wasn't... What I'm looking at is who the losses are to. You know, it's not the worst. You got Chris Duncan, Chidi Jokowani, uh, Gregory Robocop Rodriguez. Yeah, it's not bad losses. He's a good fighter. I think he's an exciting fighter. But I think we might be looking in a year or two and be like, oh, that's not a bad loss either, Abdul Malik. That's that's actually a very good good way to do it uh, or to look at it. I'm going to say Mansur Abdul Malik KO knockout. I agree. I think it's going to be – I'm going to lean towards second round. I think – the UFC has set him up to get a big win here. And there's this one fly. I'm going to name him Jeff. You see him on the computer what about right there? the other one on the computer? I don't see him. To the left of him. Of oh, Jeff. Dang. Oh, well. Uh, let's move on to the next fight. Luana Pinerjo versus Jillian Robertson, the Savage. 
Panero is on a two-fight losing streak. Yeah, three and two in the UFC started off very strong and mm-hmm. has lost two in a row, both by finish, KO and sub. Yep. Panero's wins in the UFC, I have to say, uh, is a split decision to an older Michelle Watterson Gomez. And an injury, correct? Injury and a win? DQ yeah, for a win legal up kick. Over a legal up kick for Rosanna Marcos or something like that. And I will say she did have a close win over Sam Hughes. So the only thing I have to like worry about with Panero is, is uh, is she a good fighter? Um, we're about to see because I think Robinson's a pretty good fighter. Robertson is that that dude in the sense of she's a great chick fighter and she's gonna <laughs> she's, she's a savage like her nickname is what she is she's gonna show up all the time she's 11 and 6 in the ufc 2ko nine subs with two straight wins and she's one for the last five so right. it's pinero as you said he was kind of on a, the losing end of things as of late and hasn't been mm-hmm. the most impressive and she's taking on robert robertson robertson who is one four to five who's kind of after a shaky ufc start and that you know, was in a i diff- wouldn't say shaky i would say like you know, win, win one, lose one. She's right. kind of been on a run lately, and she's well, been see, looking very good lately. I accredit that to the change in division. She was in what the she's in uh, she was in flyweight. Now she's in strawweight. So moving to div- that division, I think is what led to her that finding that power, finding the she's a killer ground game ability to just smash girls on the ground. And I love to see it. The, I believe. One of her first fights in the strawweight division, I was like, oh, Jillian Robinson? I've seen her lose a bunch against her, and then she just dog-walked the opponent, and then again I picked her. I picked against her. I'm not doing that and anymore. Her, they have a I'm common... smashing the Jillian Robinson like, Robertson-like button. You said Pinero, one of her wins is a, a win against uh, Michelle Watterson Gomez. Yeah. Robinson's, her last fight was a win against her, but... Very different win, right? In terms of she made uh, Gomez, Watson Gomez finally retire. She's beat yeah. the shit out of her. Yeah, she demolished her through the fight to where Watson Gomez retired. Not because of the fight, but she was like, "Yep, yeah, it's time." Yeah, I've I've had all what I all I needed. I don't want this anymore. But so, so yeah, I think we both agree. Robertson win. Do you see Robertson getting a finish for third? You know, uh, handing Pinero her third straight finish loss. I think so. I think Robinson, she's been building momentum. She's been, you know, getting better as a fighter. Career's going in opposite direction. I think Robinson's probably in this training camp. Yeah, she's probably focused on winning, but she's probably also focused on, I know I can make a big splash right here. Right. Make a jump. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a second round, either submission or TKO ground ground finish nice let's go to the middleweight division next this is going to be a specialist fight gerald gm3 mershart taking on a ufc newcomer but n- someone who's accustomed to fights at yeah, high he's, levels he's rainier de ritter de ritter ufc debut as you said 17 and 2 overall he went 7 and 2 and 1 mm-hmm. which is one of the top besides the ufc it's probably Probably the top one. You know, right he's up to the PFL. Yeah, he's former two division one champion. He's former two division one champ. Uh, At the same time, my my yeah, he, his, two, he lost both belts in the same night to that uh guy I can't say his name. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, he who shall not be named. Out of his seventeen wins, twelve of them by submission. So as you said, he's a submission specialist. And right. he's taking on as we know Mirshad. We watched him in the last fight. We watched him a bunch of fights. Yes. He's twelve and nine in the UFC, but thirty seven seventeen overall with twenty nine career submissions. Holds a UFC uh middle at least middleweight. Eleven career UFC submissions. Uh I mean Mirshad, this is a specialist for a specialist. It almost makes me think it's going to be a stand-up fight. So check this out. Last time uh, Mir Shart, Mar- Mir Shart fought, he fought Edmund Shabazian, the golden boy, right? Yes. You picked Edmund Shabazian. I picked GM3 to catch that crazy sub and then win, happened. which happened. Nuts. We were looking at that crazy age difference on that fight. I think Shabazian's 28, Mir Shart's 36. This is one that that is not a factor. One of those where it's like two... Guys, the age at least doesn't really play a big range. One of the things I'm looking at here, though, is De Ritter, when he was in one, fighting at one, his last middleweight fight was in, like, 2018, 2019. Everything since then has been light heavyweight or heavyweight whenever he was, like, he did a couple grappling things where he just, you know, not trying to weigh it, cut not weight for that. Yeah. Um, so my question, UFC debut, we already know it's always a difference in competition. Although one is one of the bigger ones, gotta say. 
Um, can that extra 20 pound weight cut hurt De Ritter? Well, so I mean, with somebody like Mearshard, who's been fighting middleweight for how many I see UFC what you're saying, fights but now? I'm, I'm going to bank on that De Ritter. He's a vet in terms of as a fighter. Both southpaw fighters, half an inch reach. So total I think he's going to come in where it's not that much of a weight cut. He's going to be in a little better shape. Um, Speaking to the guy last week, Cal Machado, he, he was from heavyweight to light heavyweight. Dude looked very good. He did. But um, I think this is, I mean, I'm surprised with the odds on this because I think it's a pretty even fight. Um, I Mearshot got, yeah. is a guy, he's won two in a row, but he's kind <clears throat> of a win a couple, lose a couple fighter. He definitely. Um, uh, so I think when his stock's riding too high, I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to go with the UFC debut. I'm going to go with the Ritter getting the win. That's a very interesting way to put it. I think they kind of cancel out the ground game from each other. So if this were like a roulette table, Black's been Black's going hit red. too many times, you're going red. Yeah. That's the only reason? That's not the only reason. I just think it's going to be an even fight. And, I was just trying to... And the Ritter is a you. former champ. He's fought... Although Mearshat's been in the UFC, the Ritter's been a champ, and he's, so he's... You yeah. could technically say he's probably fought... At a higher, if not the same level. He fought the best that one offered. So it's at least the same level. It's probably the guys, the only, most of the guys that Mirshad. The, Mirshad has fought tough guys like Hamza, but he also got knocked out in like 10 seconds by Hamza. You know the, uh, the people like Romanov, right? He's a heavyweight who wrestles, so it's like if you don't knock him out, you can't beat him. Yeah. Is that kind of renee's renair's de ritter's thing like he was in light heavyweight fighting a bunch of dudes who couldn't wrestle i think so because that's the only way he's ever lost is by knockout he right. hasn't been submitted um so that's one of the things that leans me to do my pick i pick gm3 because i think ritter has been riding that knock not knockout but riding the lack of wrestling people or a lot and he's gonna run into somebody who knows his way around a canvas I and agree, who knows his way around a grown man? But I think it, I got GM three. I think it for goes the win. both ways, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bank on Deritter having a better strike, and I got Deritter. All right, we can we can disagree. See how that worked out for us last week. Let's go to the next fight. <laughs> One week. <laughs> uh, Ricky Turkio is taking on Bernardo Sopaj. The new co-main event. New co-main event. Um, so Turkio lost to Rosa Jr. in June to the prolific young man. Raul yes. Rosa Jr. Second round submission. He's two and two now in the UFC. Twelve and four overall. So Isn't it crazy? Because Turkios feels. I feel like Turkios has been fighting in the UFC forever. Well, because he was. I think he was on a season of the. Content, he was. Of, um, and we saw like we saw him fight once every other day. It was when they brought <laughs> uh, Ultimate Fighter back. So it was yeah. like the one season I actually watched recently. Right. Exactly. Um, but he's two and two in the UFC. He's alternated wins losses in the UFC, and he's taking on Sopja. Zero and one in the UFC. He got KO'd. Um, yep. So it's going to be interesting to see where he goes from there. <laughs> now, and now you're thrown into a co-main event against a guy who is two and two in the UFC. But I think all accounts, people would say Turkios is a dog. Turkios is a good fighter, and when we talk about losses aging well, that Raul Rosa loss is almost guaranteed to age fantastically. Yeah, I mean, it's already for, not a bad loss, right? We didn't think it was a bad loss the moment it happened. Everybody yeah. pretty much thought he was going to lose. On this one. Man, it's, it's tough because you got Turkios with a big reach advantage of five inches on a smaller frame guy's at, you know, Bantamweight. And it's a guy who just got knocked out by a vicious knee to uh, Vinicius Oliveira. Yeah. Do, 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 do. But Another it was in the Oliveira. last 30 seconds of a fight where Sopaj was doing uh, his damnedest. You know, it was one to one going into the third. Sopaj did tire out, but it, he took it on short notice. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's one of those things where it's. For Sopaj, you can't really say it's a terrible loss, even if he got knocked out. And one thing I'll say is Sopaj, in his wins, he typically finishes. Yep. 11 wins, 10 finishes. He scored like three takedowns on Oliveira, which means, you know. Turkios is a guy when he wins, usually by decision. Right. Eight, 12 wins, eight decisions. Uh, Turkey, I mean, Sopaj's one and two in decision fights. I think this is going to be a decision fight. I think Sopaj's probably not going to be able to knock out Turkios. I think Turkios, he's been in the UFC longer, has more experience. He's fought better guys. I think he's the better fighter. Okay. I'm okay. going with Turkios. I think it's going to be a decision win, but I think it's going to be a unanimous decision win. I wholeheartedly disagree. Oh, wow. I think Bernardo Sopage is going to win. That's all I got to say about that. I hope I get that one right. Damn it. 
All right, so now main let's event. Go the main event. I think we both agree on this one. Neil this Magny. one should should be odds efficient. The Haitian Haitian sensation Neil Magny, twelve. Right. I'm sorry, 29 and 12 overall, 22 career UFC wins, 11 losses. That's, that's what I, impressive. I was gonna say that's what I put a, a a big look at here. He's been fighting in the UFC since 2013. 22, since I graduated high school. 22 UFC wins is very impressive. No it's matter insane. what you say, he has alternated his last eight fights, <laughs> and coming off of a round that. one loss uh, to six, Michael Morales. He has a six-year age deficit to Carlos Prats. And which, Prats is 20 and six overall, three mm-hmm. and zero in the UFC, all three knockouts. Uh, he most recently, I believe, knocked out Chuck Buffalo Charles Radke. Well, he knocked out Li Jing Lang too. Oh, Li Jing Lang was uh, the. First time Li Jing Lang was beaten, or yes. uh, finished, finished, I should say. Uh, Prots. Ten straight wins for Prots. Nine of them. Ten straight wins, nine straight KO slash TKO. So he's a guy. He's on a streak. He's figured some things out. You um, said that uh, Magni hasn't gone. He's alternated wins and losses his, his last, last eight. eight. And he, he lost the first round TKO his last fight. He hasn't lost back-to-back fights since... Entering like one fight after entering the UFC in 2013. I mean, that is he That's is impressive. a vet. He is a vet. That's why I'm a little surprised the odds are this crazy. I think it's like minus 900 for Prats. The, the thing is, fighters like Neil Magny, he's said it himself. He's like comfortable being a gatekeeper fighting prospects. So like that's great for your stock in the UFC. It just sucks for your stats. You know, because like you're gonna take losses when you're the gatekeeper who's cool fighting prospects all the time. Yeah, because you never know who you're gonna fight. Yeah, like you're gonna run into Carlos Prats. You're gonna run into Charles Radke. So you're gonna win some. You're gonna lose some. Ian Gary. Ian Gary. Uh, you know, name him. He's beaten him, but also probably lost him. lost to him. He's fought in everybody. He's willing to fight everybody. I think the odds are a little unfair for Magni. I still think Prats is going to get a win, but I think minus 900 for Prats, that's crazy against a yeah, guy who has that 22 steep. career UFC wins. That is pretty steep. Uh, Neil Magni is a vet, so put respect on that dude's name yeah. for sure. I think he's, he's going to come in. He's Angela gonna... Hill after all. <laughs> all right, that's my one dig. Move on. Uh, but, yeah, I got Prats winning. I don't know if he's going to get the knockout. I think he could get the knockout, but I'm kind of leaning more towards Neil Magny shows him shows him th- some things in terms of brings him a little down to earth, but Prots is still able to get the win. But Neil Magny is going to have a little success, but I got Prots by unanimous decision. Unanimous decision? Okay. I uh... Well, you can't call a split decision because that's just calling the, calling the podcast. I got Prots. You could just say I got Prots by. You could. That's just saying like I got one judge isn't going to pay attention. Sal Diamato by split decision. No, uh, I got Carlos Prats. I have no idea how he wins it. He could, based on the odds, I feel like he's going to walk out, punch him once in the face, and he, yeah. man, he's just going to be a corpse on the ground. But based on how we historically see people fight, it's going to be an entertaining, you know, scrap. I, uh, I could easily agree seeing Prats be a unanimous decision victory here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to kick off and wrap up this episode of Split Decision with uh, huddling up with stakes and takes. Hut! So I say kick off because I always do that, but it's actually a football term, so that works too. Uh, we always bring 10 football games during football season, five college, five pro. Uh, this week, we're going to do the quick recap of college football week 10, NFL week 9, and then we'll I think jump. I you went 10-0 and 0 overall in football last week. I went 9-1, and 1, so we both did pretty well. Yeah, I would uh, highly suggest anybody listening to follow most of our picks. I keep a spreadsheet. I'll post it if anybody wants. Uh, Christian, my man over here, is picking like 75% plus in college football. I'm doing like 60-something percent plus. Uh, but in soccer, this man's usually on fire. That's going to come in a few weeks. So let's jump into the... College football kickoff recap for Week Ten, and the game of the week was the first game we looked at. Ohio it was an State, early Penn morning State, game, right? Eleven a.m. Yeah. Twelve, twelve uh, local time. Ohio State, Penn State. Penn State does what they do, and that is lose big games. <laughs> twenty to thirteen, Ohio State wins. Uh, I mean, if you follow college football over the past like twenty years, this was as predictable as a game it was going to be. Penn State was yeah. going to stay in it. When it came to crunch time, they were going to falter, especially to Ohio State. Yep. I mean, it is what it is. Ohio shout, State got the win. Shout out both of us for getting the pick right, knowing, yeah. assuming things were going to just happen as always. 
So we went smooth sailing from there right into the Duke Miami game, and uh, smooth sailing really didn't stop there as Miami. I did have a bad beat on this one. Oh, you did. You thought this one was gonna be close. I picked Miami to win, but I had Duke plus twenty and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway through the third quarter, Duke was up twenty eight seventeen. Yep. So thirty one points, pretty much. And they to, lost fifty three to, to thirty one. It was. It's what you don't want to see if you're uh, rooting for a cover. Or yeah, I mean, it was like Vegas knew exactly what was going to happen. Yeah, it's crazy. So but they ended up losing, but what is that, 22? 22 points. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Miami. At I least you didn't get hooked. Both knew Miami was going to win. It made it, it made it interesting. You know, it was, I say smooth sailing because when you look at the box score. Oh, yeah. If you just look at the score, you're like, oh, Miami. My parlay still hit, so I forgot it was a contentious game. It was very close. It uh, looked for a while like Duke was 30, doing something. Yeah. It was a good game. Uh, next game, we both got that one right as well. We already said I went undefeated. It was cool. Oregon, Oregon at Michigan. Oregon did what they do. They just kind of dominated Michigan. Michigan, Michigan just does hasn't what they been do. good this year. They had this is their fourth loss of the well, season. Well, I mean, they won the title last year. They lost their coach, their quarterback, some of their best defensive players. Did Blake Corum was he at Michigan? Yeah, he was. I have him in one of my dynasty leagues. Yes, he was. He was Michigan's best running back last year. So they lost a lot. Um, He's I think not everybody the best knew running were, back this year. Everybody knew they were going to fall off. I don't know if we knew they were going to fall off this much. Three and three in the Big Ten, five and four overall. Taylor Luan is in shambles right now. Hey, but hey, you so you sell it all for title. I think Michigan fans would take that all day. Yeah, absolutely. title and then go like six and six next year. You take Oregon that. did the assumed they covered. They almost single handedly got the over. I mean, Oregon's looking. They're right now the most consistent team. I in the hate nation. that I said Texas was going to win the national championship because Oregon's over here doing shit like this every week. All right, let's go to the next game: Florida at Georgia. This game was closer than we thought for a while. Then Florida's quarterback got hurt, and then Georgia just ran away with it. Florida couldn't do anything. Yeah, after that. Georgia put up six points in the first half and twenty eight in the second. Georgia continues to win games. Despite, but not look impressive. Despite what they're doing to not win games. Yeah, they don't yeah. look impressive. 34-20 final score. So score is, again, not indicative of how, of how the game really went. Uh, but it, truly a tale of two halves. Yeah. <laughs> Good on Georgia. They keep winning, though. That's all they can. At this point, they have enough of a reputation where it's like they just keep winning. Yeah. They get in the playoffs. Then once you're in the playoffs, literally all you have to do is keep winning. It doesn't matter how you win. Yeah, like it doesn't have to be pretty. You just got to do it. Let's Shout out FSU getting snubbed from the playoffs last year and then, and then having a Another garbage season. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh at SMU was Only the last game. Only one I got game. wrong, and boy did I get it wrong. SMU beat the shit out of Pitt. All right, so I'm going to read what I wrote as my notes just so hopefully we can remember this for the future. SM, this is what I wrote for the preview last week. SMU won 14 straight against conference op- opponents. Holston yes, QB but this for is their new season in a conference. Right, but it's still – Previous times, they still did that, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then Pitt's quarterback had uh, good stats. That's pretty much all I wrote. Um, he didn't have I thought stats. SMU was going to win. Um, they were the money line favorite. I think it was like 31-3 at halftime. It was 31-3 at halftime. It was, I mean. SMU continues to do things. Yeah. Shout they out have to a chance them. to go to the playoffs there in the top of the tie for first in the ACC. So. Yeah. So from here, do you want to go jump to talk about our – Week 11 college football picks, or do you want to recap NFL? Let's say we recap NFL. All right, let's Alex. recap the NFL. Start off with Broncos. I'm sorry, Dolphins at Bills was the first game. Uh, the Dolphins are a different team with Tua. They're way better with Tua back. Man, but, but they the Bills are still got rocky the win. still. Bills. Still rocky with Tua. They didn't get the yes, wide receivers but at least activated. Can, I think can... Jalen Waddle caught his four, first pass. Two minutes left in the fourth quarter. First target. But they can now score points. Before this, they weren't scoring over 20 points. Yeah. They gave the Bills, who are one of the best teams in the NFL, a game. 27 to 30. Final score. Bills hit a 61-yard field goal to win it with like five seconds left. Yep. Um, Josh Allen doing Josh Allen things. Josh Allen's the man. I love Josh Allen. Yep. I had Bills minus six and a half, so that kind of sucks, but yeah, is what it is. You win some, you lose some when you're betting spreads, though. That just It's hard to predict. It's a lot easier to just win picks. Uh, we both got Bills right. Broncos at Ravens was the next one. Bo Nix uh, hit his little expected slump against the Ravens. Couldn't well, I mean, really... he hasn't really been in, at all killing it. No, no, but he's been efficient. Adequate. Adequate is a good word. And then the Ravens proved dude. they're one of the best teams. Yeah, dude, yeah. I mean, Derrick Henry, shit two rushing him. touchdowns. Lamar Jackson with five pa- or three passing. Ugh. They just beat the shit out of the Broncos. 
this is like when we say the UFC, there's levels to this. They both had the same record coming in, but like it's a different knew, game. Everybody knew the Ravens were the better team in this. Yeah, absolutely. Lions at Packers next. Lions walk to the Packers home and beat the shit out of them at home. Another game featuring one of the best teams in the NFL, the Lions. That's really weird to say. but The, the Lions the have now won six straight coming into Seven and one nine. now. I mean, they're hot. A lot of people, away. they went, to, they blew the NFC Championship last year. Remember, they were up like 20 points and yep. blew it. And I think everybody, they had a lot of expectation. They had their Matt Ryan game. They had a lot of expectation coming into this year. So it was kind of like, can they live up to it? And they yeah. more than lived up to it. Lions are for real. They are for real. Uh, Colts at Vikings. Um, Anthony Richardson. I was benched. really hoping the Colts would be the one to ruin your week, the your perfect week. Yeah, because like it would, how mad would I be? It would be like, that's funny. Right, like I... And they almost did. They played... Yeah, 13 to 21. Game. They, you know, they... I wouldn't say they played a great game, because I don't think either team really played great in this game. No, but Vikings Sam Darnold come... still somehow threw three touchdowns. So, like, he still did enough to just get it. He only did that in the second... Excuse me, second half, though. So, there's that. Uh, Buccaneers continue for the next, last game. Buccaneers continue to uh, do a lot but fall short, but lose. Dude, they, I mean, they the, played the Ravens. I mean, they played the Chiefs so well, brought them to overtime in Kansas City, but, but you know, we all Chiefs, knew it was about to happen. Yeah, the Chiefs just, they're not going to lose that game. Like, they're not. If you give, the, the Chiefs have a chance to win that game, they're not going to lose it. Right. The Chiefs went down in the fourth quarter, scored 14 points to tie it up. And get the ball first in overtime. Once they got, once they won the coin toss, and they got the ball first. But even if they you knew the Chiefs were getting in and scoring such, even if they, I wasn't concerned going into over, overtime, I would have been comfortable turning off the game and just checking the score an hour later because yeah. I knew that somehow it's not like a Baker. If is the Bucks blow got the thing. ball, they would have driven down, got a field goal. Chiefs would have got to score a touchdown. It's, right. It's just how thing. it's just how the Chiefs do. It's not that it's rigged or anything. They're just that. It damn might be rigged good. a little bit, but they're all that good too. They're just that damn good. Eight and zero. Oh, they're finally getting money lines that are not favoring people betting on them. Yeah. So shout out to that. All right, that's all the uh, that's all the football picks. I went ten and zero in college football and NFL combined. Nine and one, so not bad from either one of us. Uh, total for the week, I went fifteen zero and one with the one Derek Lewis cancel. You went uh, twelve three and one, so you only had three losses. It's not a bad day. I went five and zero on bets. You went two two and one on bets. Yeah. It's a good week overall. We like that. I'm finally positive on the season in money. You're a bitch. It's okay. I'll take it. Do better. You'll do better. I believe in you. All right, next up. I'm uh, not fist bumping you. <laughs> All right, let's talk about whatever we're picking for this week in college football. Five college, five pro. NFL. And then and we'll give you the free bets. Little disclaimer, when I pick the college football games, Vanderbilt was ranked. Then college football playoff rankings came out. They aren't ranked, so we do have an unranked versus unranked matchup. The first one of the season. Well, I guess week zero. Yeah, we pick. I think we had one with Colorado in there, but we right. digress. We're going to start with Florida Gators. They get rewarded with uh, where they played relatively well against Georgia. Another so tough they go to Texas to take on number five Texas. Florida four and four, two and three SEC. Texas seven and one, three and one SEC. Texas also coming off of a bye week after their close game against Vandy, which just give Qu- gives Quinn Ewers even more time to get back to a hundred percent. Texas is twenty one and a half point favorite. Twenty two and a half now, which I kind of agree with, given the fact that Florida is missing. They're gonna, I believe, they're starting a third string quarterback in this game. He's a rookie, right? Freshman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's um, a freshman. Texas minus 2,500 money line. Wild. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that says it all. I think Texas is going to come in. So how close do you think? Do you think this one's going to be like Florida, Georgia at all? Or is it going to be? I think be this is going to be like a, a traditional good old-fashioned blowout. I think it's going to be like a 31-7 game. Oh, okay. I could see that. Get Arch Manning in there for a few drives at the end. Possibly. Yeah, I like it. I got Texas winning. There's not yeah. much to say about it. Uh, DJ Lang- Langway is the questionable quarterback for Florida. Yeah. Um, Eugene Wilson is out for the season. He has to have hip surgery for Florida. Um, Graham Mertz out for the season. That's their original starting quarterback. Texas about to have a huge day. I got Texas winning every aspect of this game. All right, let's move on. Next one, it's one of the only two ranked versus ranked matchups. The number three Georgia Bulldogs, seven and one, five and one in the SEC, 
going to Mississippi, taking on the 16th ranked Ole Miss Rebels, seven and two, three and two. Georgia, so, as we said there last week, beat Florida, mm-hmm. uh, somewhat pretty. underwhelming. Right. Uh, Ole Miss, very overwhelming. Beat the shit out of Arkansas last week, yeah. 63. 31. They can score points. Ole Miss, two and a half point underdogs at home. They're plus 115 money line. I think this is going to be a very, very good game. Interesting because Ole Miss has the big explosive offense. Georgia's kind of a more conservative team. But Georgia has that ability to put up points still, too. Like they do, but they not, not at the rate Ole Miss does. It's going to come down to can Ole Miss put points on the Georgia defense, which I don't know about. So you got Jackson Dart. He's got like 3,200 passing yards. I think he, like, I think he threw six touchdowns last week. Something like that. Uh, 21 total touchdowns on the season. Only three interceptions. Carson Beck, on the other hand, 2,300 yards. Still has thrown 17 touchdowns in his own right. Still a shit ton. He threw three picks last week alone. Yeah, but he's only got, what, five or six picks on the season? It's not a bunch. So if you throw three in one week and you got six now, that's still pretty damn good. I know it sucks to have thrown he three He has been very week. underwhelming this year. He's been the most disappointing He's definitely the ugliest quarterback in college football. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, he's been holding the, the team back, in my opinion. Honestly, which I'm all for. How, like how is Ole Miss at home is my biggest question. What do you mean? Like, Texas A&M at home is very hard to beat. I mean, they're is good, Ole Miss but they're kind not, of the same thing? Not that good. Or, like, they're LSU good. at home is a fucking travesty to go in there and beat them at, at the they're house. They're good, but they're... They're not at the top tier of home teams. They're like okay. that second tier. With that being said, then I will go. I will ride the lightning with Georgia. Carson Beck will find a way. Jackson Dart, as good as he is, I don't know if he's going to throw a million interceptions. But I, like you said, I don't know if he'll be able to score a bunch on the Georgia defense. Yeah, I got Georgia. Uh, I think they're going to keep the Ole Miss offense relatively in check. But I got the Bulldogs. That's a way better way of saying it. Keeping relatively in check. I got the Bulldogs going into Oxford, getting the win. All right, Colorado ranked 20, 6-2 overall, taking on Texas Tech. Yeah. Colorado unranked. In, in play for the Big 12 championship. They're 4-1 in the Big 12. Texas Tech 4-2. and two. Colorado, this is the year. Nobody's, you know, they kind of, I don't want to say fell off the radar. They were just they so fell much, off the hype, the hype train. Which is probably the best thing that could have happened to them. Yeah, you talked about that earlier in the season when we – one of the other few times that we covered them, that this is this is the season. They're where, way better this year than where they can actually grow because they're not on ESPN like Taylor Swift on every Chiefs game, you know, like being just drowned out of the media. They're actually given time to like go grow their program and let and Dion do well. his thing. And last week they beat Cincinnati thirty four twenty three. Texas Tech had the big upset win against Iowa State in their last game mm-hmm. that gave Iowa State their first loss of the year. Uh, Texas Tech's been an up and down team this year. Uh, a huge they over have, in this game. They have the ability. What's that? A huge line for the over under 62 and a half. Yeah, it's going to be a high scoring game. Texas Tech has the ability to win this game, but they're very inconsistent. I'm going to go with Colorado. I'm going to go with the Stars. I think they have the two best players that are going to be on the field. That's Shadur Sanders and uh, Travis Hunter's Hunter. the best player. Yeah. Uh, I got Colorado. I think they continue to be a team fighting for that Big 12 title. Uh, fighting for a chance in the Big 12 championship, which means you're fighting for a playoff spot. Right. Give me the buffs. I uh, agree. Well, there we go. <laughs> Next game, South Carolina at Vanderbilt. South Carolina, 5-3, and 3-3 three, three and three SEC, but they're coming off of a huge win mm-hmm. against Texas A&M, knocked Texas A&M off the undefeated SEC train. Both teams have seen high highs this season. Yeah, and Vanderbilt, 6-3, and 3-2, three, three and two, coming off of a win at Auburn. Mm-hmm. Before that, if you remember, close loss against Texas, and before yep. that, they beat Alabama. Which... Huge win, Huge biggest win. win of their season, their in their program. Past One of the ten years at least, over ten years. Uh, South Carolina, four and a half point favorites on the road against Vanderbilt. Uh, Vanderbilt plus one sixty five at home. I think this is a feel good story for both programs. They're both doing well this year. Yeah, uh, I think this is low key going to be. One of the best games of the weekend. Both teams, they fight hard. They can make big plays. They have dynamic quarterbacks. And both have the ability to win this game. Both have the ability to win this game. I'm going to lean towards South Carolina. Uh, I think they're starting to figure things out. They got the running back. They got the quarterback sellers. Uh, give me the Gamecocks. I got to disagree with you here. I think Vanderbilt's going to you know, stand up at home and stand on that business. I think Vanderbilt's going to win at home. On a close game, I think it's going to be a good, you know, a it's good gonna, matchup. It has the possibility to be the best game we cover. I really do, because a lot of them are going to, you know, they're ranked versus ranked. Is you know, Texas versus Florida, so it's going to be a 
decidedly win either way. I think this, you're right. I think this is going to be a very good game, very close game. I got Vanderbilt. And let's move on to the game of the week. It's Another usually, good game. Usually one of the best games all season, every season. And this year I think it's going to deliver to the 11th ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama, 6-2, and 3-2 two, and two mm-hmm. in the SEC. Go to Tiger Stadium and take on LSU, number 15, 6-2, and 3-1 and one in the SEC. Alabama, two-and-a-half-point favorites in Baton Rouge. Um, I want to say this is going to be one of them traditional old shootouts because you got Jalen Milrow with, what is it, 1,900 yards, 13 touchdowns, so he hadn't been performing super well over the past four or five weeks, I think. Well, their last game they played, they beat the shit out of Missouri. It was their best, oh, yeah. probably their best 30, game. What, 34-0 or 34-0. something like that? 34-0. LSU last game. It's a loss against A&M at A&M. But it kind of imploded A&M, in the A&M second is half. One, of those home, one of those teams where it's just so hard to beat them at home. It is. And both teams had a bye week. They have, they've had weeks to prepare for this. Uh, I think it's going to be – I mean, this is one of the biggest rivalries in the SEC. I think it's going to be a yeah. good game. Close uh, in all categories. Close in all categories. I think Except the teams, passing yards. Nussmeyer got them smoked there. Yeah. But they probably have a smoked in rushing yards. Yeah, it's a kind of flip, flip-flop uh, there. I think it's going to be a close game. i got to go with the LSU, obviously. I'm um, wearing the LSU jersey. They're my favorite team. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to figure out a way to pull it out. Uh, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised either way, whatever happens in this game. Yeah. I can't disagree. I uh, I got to go with the home team here. I'm, I'm, we won something else this week, so I don't, have, I don't feel the need to be a dick anymore. Uh, so LSU for the win all the way. Go Tigers. Let's go with the NFL Week 9 to uh, give it the last five picks of the week. I picked these myself. I always pick one or two noon games, one one or two three o'clock games, and the rest are you know the Saturday, Sunday, Monday night games. Uh, let's go first up: Broncos at Chiefs. So Broncos at Chiefs. Sound the alarm, Alex. What? This is my guest pick of the week. Oh, my beautiful fiance Clara. Chiefs I, are her team. I think I know why. I remember why actually. This I know why. I just remember it. Chiefs are her team. The eight no Chiefs. Uh, Eight no, eight Looks no pretty. Chiefs, and I mean they're about to be nine and no. Oh yeah, Clara thinks so too. My beautiful fiance, she's got the Chiefs beating the Broncos. I'm gonna say they beat them by more than seven and a half, which is a spread. So give me the Chiefs. It's, give Clara the Chiefs. My it's guest pick for my beautiful fiance. Perfectly possible with the Chiefs. They activated Kareem Hunt. No, they got him back, I should say, which is a hell of a move for the them. Sh- Deshaun Hopkins. Or DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins. You're thinking of Deshaun Watson yes. for whatever reason. DeAndre Hopkins, they're starting to figure that out. Yeah, they just fed him the ball last week. I, I agree. Uh, Chiefs by a million. Money line. Don't worry. Just put whatever you want on the Chiefs. You're going to win it. Good pick, Clara. Uh, let's move on to the Good next win, one. Good win, Clara. Proud of you. Steelers six and two at the Commanders seven and two. This is a game. I don't know if anybody thought this was going to be Bruh. this big of a game before the season started, but here we are. I was looking at the best rookie quarterback records of all times, and then I just stopped searching because I was like, ah, it's got to be Jaden Daniels by the end of the season. I mean, he's definitely up there. <laughs> uh, Commanders are minus two and a half point favorites at home, minus one forty five on the money line. And they're contending with every single team they play. They got two they're losses contending. on the season. They lost a close loss to the Bucks week one. A close loss to the Ravens. And a close loss to the Ravens of all people who are shutting every team they play down. Now the Steelers have also been pretty impressive this year. They always uh, have a good defense and but then they, since they, they were, got Russ. They were slowly or they were like, you know, ugly winning yeah. the first six weeks with fields. Yeah. Now that Russ has come back they look like a different team. They look like a more dynamic team. Yeah, a team with just pure ability. They woke up Najee Harris. Interesting thing, because the Steelers had a uh, bye last week, both teams' last games were wins over the Giants. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steelers by six, Commanders by five. Uh, but, yeah, I think the Commanders, I'm riding with Jaden Daniels. He's becoming one of my favorite players, especially with the LSU connection. Uh, give me the Commanders winning. Rookie of the year? Undoubtedly, he's the rookie of the year at this point. Right, that's what I'm sorry. Yeah, I agree. Commanders all the way. Uh, not by a million, but definitely I think they're going to win this game. Uh, next game, Jets at Cardinals. This is if – if we were talking about this in terms of a fight, this would be the most contentious, weird matchup. That would be yeah. the hardest thing to pick and because – And still, Vegas continues to give the Jets – the favor. Respect. They're minus two point favorites at Arizona. Cardinals are five and four. Jets are three and six. Let's be fair though, within within ter- with terms of the Jets, you got Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams, who at this point are pretty much guaranteed to get twenty five targets combined. 
Oh, Aaron's like, feeding him the ball. There's no, there's nobody else he's throwing it to. They just traded off Mike Williams. Rodgers because he's like, ah, we just need two wide receivers. Brees Allen or uh, Braylon Allen and uh, Brees Hall or whoever he is. Brees Hall, yeah. The Jets. I mean, it's one of those things. Are they figuring out? If they are, yeah, hammer the Jets all day. If they're not, I think it's going to be a close, ugly game. Well, that's literally what you're supposed to be telling the people. What do you think? Is it going to be the Jets? Or I think it's it going to be a close, ugly game that the Jets <laughs> figure out a way to win. I got yeah. the Jets. Uh, much like their game against the Texans last week, I think it's going to be not the most convincing, but they're going to have a stretch of play probably late where Aaron Rodgers is going to figure it out, throw three touchdowns in a quarter again. And yeah, just some stupid Aaron Rodgers-type shit, win the game. I think it's hard. Aaron is reinvigorated with his buddy, with things that have happened this week. So oh, yeah, I'm that's sure. true. <laughs> Yeah, big things that have happened this week, yeah. but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, Jets win, money yeah, line, I, I think. Jets, Jets by two, that's a favorable spread because yeah. it's hard to just win by two. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, they're going to win by one now that you said that. Well, they, as long as they win, I'm cool. Let's go to the next one Lions at Texans. So, the Lions are fantastic, one of the best teams in the NFL right now. And the Texans are one of the worst six and three teams I can think of. They're great. Yeah, but, but they're, thing. there's just something about them that they like can't get over the hump or something. Lions are four zero in the road. Texans four zero at home. So Texans yeah. do play well at home. They did lose last week. The Texans that is to the Jets as we just talked about. Lions. Right. We talked about it earlier. Went to Green Bay and got a big win. Yep. In their last game. Um, you know, I think the Texans. Sonic and Knuckles are killing it. Jameer Gibbs and uh, David Montgomery. And then the Texans with. Uh, is Diggs it, is out for the year. Oh, yeah, Diggs is um, out for the year. You know, I think the Texans, they're going to come out, they're going to play better. But I just think at this point, the Lions are getting to the territory where, like, I'm not picking against the Lions. And, bruh. They have looked so good. C.J. Stroud has got to stop giving younger quarterbacks than him pep talks after it's they so disrespect. beat the shit out of it. Or what, you know. It's like, dude, you're 25. I'm older than you. Yeah, some of them are like, dude. <laughs> so... Yeah, I think the Lions are going to win. I think they need to put C.J. Stroud in this place a little bit because he— uh, I mean, I like C.J. Stroud, but He's yeah. cool, but they, the, the Texans just are not that good. Not as good as the Lions, I should say. Uh, yes, Lions. they both got the Lions. And let's go to the Monday Night Football game. This is the Kind of a lackluster one. Monday Night game. Two and six Dolphins against the four and four Rams in L.A. Uh, and our, the only reason the Dolphins are two and six is because they didn't have a quarterback for— Six weeks. Dolphins, as we talked about earlier, lost to Buffalo last week. Rams have been – they've won three in a row. They beat the Seahawks in overtime last week. Um, Rams were a bad team because they didn't have Puka and Cooper Cup. So it's like – They got them and they've been winning. Yeah. And well, then they lost them last week and Puka decided to throw hands on somebody. Yeah. Ejection. But they still won, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think this is a weird game. I think this is probably the game that's hardest to say like exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I think if I were to guess, this week is when uh, Tua gets his rhythm with the guys back. You know, with uh, Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill. Type. With the boys. Yeah, get your boys back in the game. Uh, the Dolphins, I could easily see win- winning this game. But the Rams have been playing consistently well. You got Kyron Williams, who's been rushing well. He's got like eight touchdowns on the season through eight games so that's good uh i still think the dolphins are going to win like i said before i think tyreek hill is going to get activated quote unquote you know he always has those games sounds where... suspect uh you know he always always has are those you games. gonna activate tyreek i mean whatever it takes to win coach call me never mind uh stormy daniels dolphins are going to give Tyreek Hill here one of those explosive games, like seven receptions, 178 yards, and two touchdowns type so things. So all that just so you think the Dolphins are going to win? Yes, sir. I got the Rams. Cute. All right, so that's all of our picks for football. Alex, you want to run through the picks and give bets and then get out of here? Yeah, let's start with the uh, UFC. I'm going to go with the forced first fight. Mansur Abdul-Malik, Jillian Robinson, Gerald Mearshart. Bernardo Sopage, Carlos Prats, college football, Texas, Georgia, Colorado, Vanderbilt, LSU, and the NFL. I'm going to go with the Chiefs, Commanders, Jets, Lions, and the Dolphins. Now, right. keep in mind, I went perfect last week, so. So it's definitely not going to happen this week. <laughs> that would be absolutely nuts if I did it twice. Uh, I got Abdul Malik, Robertson, Turkios, DeRitter, Prats. 
for UFC. Yep. College football, Texas, Georgia, Colorado, South Carolina, and LSU. And then for NFL, I got Chiefs, Commanders, Jets, Lions, and the Rams. Yeah. One of us is going to win. One of us is. Uh, so for bets this week, as always, uh, free advice. Take them or don't take them. It's whatever you want to do. I got five. I'm going to do one UFC because all the odds are kind of whack. Yeah. On I also the main have card. UFC. I'm going to do uh, two college football and two, two college football. NFL. And I have two NFL. Wow. Oh, my God. We're like the same. Uh, so my one UFC is going to be four units on Jillian Robinson at minus 425. It's not going to pay out a whole bunch. But I'm hoping to get the win there. I think she's a dominant uh, UFC woman. Next up, I'm going to go with the Georgia money line. Two units there. LSU money line, plus 125 on that one. Only one unit because of the Jillian side on the other thing. Uh, Commander's money line, one unit there as well. And the Lions money line, two units. What you got for yours? All right, so I got two units on everything. Okay. So I'm going to have Turkios money line at plus 250. I'm going to have the Colorado money line at minus 185. South Carolina money line at minus 195. I have Commanders at minus two and a half points mm -hmm. with minus 120 odds. I like it. And then the New York Jets minus 125. Sweet. So those are the picks. Those are the bets. Make you some money. Yes. Well, let's do the thing. That's episode 67. Check us out next week. We have episode 68. Mm -hmm. We got recap of UFC. We got college football. We got NFL. And a big fight card, UFC 309. John Jones cover. is back? John, hope, knock on wood. Hopefully John Jones is back for Stipe. Hell yeah. Um, if not, it's going to be Tom Aspinall. Yeah. <laughs> so either way, I'm, honestly, yeah. I'm down. But yeah, check us out next week for episode 68. Holla. Holla.